guys, Jessica here, the Furry Family Coach. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about dog-on-dog -dog aggression. Um, and dog-on-dog -dog aggression can be pretty serious sometimes. Um, hey, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, if you would, if you have any experience with dog-on-dog -dog aggression, if you have any questions or comments about it, um, go ahead and post in the comment section. I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to hear about your experiences, um, maybe some things you've been through, and let's talk about um, the proper way to handle and deal with dog-on-dog -dog aggression and um, identifying it as well because sometimes it, sometimes it can get a little bit tricky. It seems like kind of a cut and dry um, topic, but let's talk about it. So when we have multiple dogs in an area, it can happen. Like we, of course, we want our dogs to be um, social butterflies and well-adjusted and love everyone and everything all the time. Uh, but this is kind of an unrealistic expectation um, and we can manage it pretty well. But in reality, it is pretty unrealistic, especially with um, you know, every dog in the world, there are a lot of dogs out there and they're not always going to always get along with every other dog. Um, and it's un it's just as unrealistic as expecting every human to get along with every other human. Um, so let's talk about first identifying it and then we'll talk about ways to manage dog on dog aggression. Um, so you know, when you have like multiple dogs in a household, for instance, there are going to be little, you know, small fights, little squabbles that you may see one for the first time and go start freaking out. Oh my gosh, my dog is becoming aggressive. But you know, that's normal kind of, there. there's a difference between normal kind of sibling rivalry and just, hey, you did something I don't like, we're going to work this out, or that's my toy. Um, or, you know, this is my time with the toy, not your time with the toy, and they'll work it out and it's not always a big deal. But when it comes to aggression that is occurring regularly, um, especially if a dog or dogs are being injured, then that's a problem that we definitely need to address and uh, start making changes and correcting for because we can't have dogs constantly being stressed out um, through fear and aggression. We can't have dogs getting physically injured. That's something we definitely want to focus on and make sure we take care of quickly. Um, and we know that we know that when dogs are aggressive, it's usually for one of two reasons. The first being that they've had some sort of traumatic life experience. Um, and if you adopted your dog at an older age, you may not know what that traumatic life experience was or that it even happened, um, but it did. And it can definitely cause aggression, especially when they are fearing um, that they are going to be hurt or injured or that they are not going to have um, access to resources that are necessary to sustain life, uh, such as food and water, um, shelter, things like that. So traumatic life experiences can absolutely cause aggression in a dog. And again, we don't always know what has happened um, with a dog that could have caused them to become aggressive and sometimes they can go through traumatic experiences and we may not realize how traumatic that experience is and sometimes they can go through traumatic experiences and we think it's going to cause problems and it doesn't so you know every dog is going to handle every situation differently so it's really important if you do have a dog that has recently gone through a traumatic situation that you really spend the time and take, you know, be patient and spend the time with them to make sure um, that whatever, whatever happened in that situation, we build 
rebuild positive relationships around so that it doesn't create fear and anxiety and aggression in your dog. Um, but the second thing is that they could just be um, combative and aggressive over, over resources. And that could be anything from food and water and shelter to um, love and uh, affection and they could have, you know, a, a really strong bond with a person or another dog and they don't want any other dog to uh, come around that person or dog. So there are, there's a whole spectrum of what your dog could be aggressive, um, trying to protect, trying to keep for themselves or trying to protect, um, which is a, another way of saying resource guarding. But with this added level of you know, serious aggression that, that we have to take into account. So what do we do if, if we have a dog that is aggressive, that is overly aggressive, um, especially to other people, other dogs? Um, well, the first thing, the first thing we have to do is take a step back and breathe, understand that your dog is going through something and respect that they're going through it. So don't force them into situations that are going to cause them to have to act out in aggression. Um, so if they are dog on dog aggressive, then you don't wanna force them into social situations where they have to be in a confined space or close to another dog. Um, but that being said, what you do want to do is slowly work to rebuild the association your dog has with whatever their trigger is um, and, and use positive reinforcement to reshape and remold the narrative for them in their head that um, changes from aggression to everything's gonna be okay. And the way we do that is by, um, first of all, when you know you have an aggressive dog and they're aggressive to other dogs, um, you definitely wanna work with a licensed professional. Um, I say licensed, you know, there, there really isn't a whole lot of regulation um, as far as licensing, but a professional force-free positive reinforcement dog trainer um, who understands aggression, who understands how to read uh, body language in dogs, and has a lot of experience with working with aggressive dogs. Um, because what, what ideally what you want is a dog who is very laid back and not at all aggressive, but very good at showing body language to help work with an aggressive dog to change that behavior and that that dog that you need is is a special dog um very special in that they can not react to the aggression in another dog but give body language signals to the trainer or to their owner um that hey this is going on and we need to handle it so um you need a dog like that <laughs> um so you need to work with a professional positive reinforcement trainer. And you do want interaction between the dogs, but initially you just want them to be in a safe space. So um, you definitely don't wanna do this inside of your home. You wanna to go to a, um, a, a neutral space, like a park, um, and, and work on this, work on the aggression with your dog. So when you're, when the aggressive dog is approaching a non-aggressive dog or, you know, the, the aggressive, the non-aggressor that the trainer is bringing in, um, you initially find your, your safe zone. Like at what point, at what distance does your dog have to be before, just before their aggression starts to kick in? And you need to work in that comfort zone for your dog and let your dog know that it is okay that this other dog is here and you use positive reinforcement to reshape and mold that behavior in your dog, letting them know that it's okay that this other dog is around and slowly over time, you're going to decrease the distances as your dog, um, as your dog allows. 
So that's kind of the basic idea in working with aggressive dogs and helping to reshape the behavior in an aggressive dog, um, helping them through positive reinforcement training, understand that whatever their trigger is, um, is not necessarily a bad thing, isn't something that needs to, to bring out aggression in your dog. Um, and we need to be realistic in the idea that not every dog is going to be thrilled with being around other dogs. Um, some dogs really are happier being the only dog in a home. And, you know, we, we need to take these things into account. Um, do the work and have the patience and, you know, put in the effort to help your dog overcome the fear and anxiety that is causing the aggression um, while being realistic in, with your expectations. So that's basically what we do when we are working with an aggressive dog. Um, it, 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 it doesn't, it doesn't help a lot to have two aggressive dogs and trying to work with them together. Um, but, uh, you know, finding a professional force free, positive reinforcement trainer, um, to help work through your dog's aggression is going to be key. Um, just make sure when you are looking for that trainer that they are positive. They only use positive reinforcement, um, which means, of course, we're not using shock collars or electronic collars or any so sort of uh, force. We're not flooding the animal, which means um, overwhelming their system with the trigger. Uh, which has been used in the past. That's, that's a topic for another video. Um, but if you have questions about that, I'll be happy to answer. So that's basically um, how we kind of work with an aggressive dog or a dog on dog aggression um, as positive reinforcement trainers. Um, so if you feel like you may have this situation, if you feel like your dog may be too aggressive or um, you know is aggressive towards people or other dogs then definitely reach out I'd love to talk to you about it um, post in the comments even if you have a question about something else dog training dog behavior you can talk about cats cat cat behavior if you want to um, uh, nutrition for your dogs and cats I love to talk about that so I'm gonna go ahead and end this video again if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will talk to you in the next video